Should we do? Should we do? Another? Should we do another episode? Oh. I, 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 I still, I don't know. Are we rolling? Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. Did I unmute myself? Uh, yeah. 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 Blah 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 blah. Cool. <laughs> 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 Should we do another episode? How unprofessional do you think Lucas is? <laughs> We're going to get through the whole thing and it's like, oh, Summer didn't say much in that episode. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about this. Cross-fading DOM elements. Yep. Yeah, have you heard of CSS opacity? I have, and watch me use it. Are you ready? Yes. Whoa, hey! What's for Job done. Ship it. OK. That is easy, because one of the elements is opaque and covers the other one. Like, crossfading is easy on the web when that's the case. And that's what I had there. I As had, like, opposed to so when there's opaque. Oh, I think like, there's no transparency in the visual you're fading in. Yes, because I've, I've okay. got an element. It's got the, the blue gradient. I've gone from the, the yellow gradient and other elements over the top, and I've just gone from opacity 0 to opacity 1, job done. That's actually a, it's a good crossfade. It works. Yeah. But dun, dun, dun. Oh, Jake with his checkered backgrounds. Yep. <laughs> Pretty much everything I work on ends up with a checkered background <laughs> at some point. <laughs> and this is no exception. So the same trick from before does not work here. Because Just like fading on, on top. Yeah. Right. Uh, that clearly is not. <laughs> Come on, we're all learning things, right? <laughs> So when I've been faced with this situation, mm -hmm. what I've done is, well, I've got to fade the other one out as well. Yeah. Double opacity. One, you know, the good there is going to yeah. go from opacity okay. one to opacity zero. And then the other one. Yeah, come to the fucking do it. OK, OK. It's pretty good. No. <laughs> no, that wasn't good. Look at it. It's horrible. But the bit to look out for is the, the G and the O, which is the same in both. Mm -hmm. It fades out and then fades oh, back in. Oh, there's a bit of checkered background. So if I, like his, but see, I see I'm too distracted by the O, A, T, D stuff that I don't notice that. So I feel like you can just ship it. No, I want to no. <laughs> End of episode. Shut up. <laughs> I want to do this properly. Okay. So um, there's, the, the thing is that there's some, a bit of like a, whoop, whoop, from on the first letter that should be the same and should just stay constant. Yes. And it's well, and it's wrong. So this is the 50% mark. It shouldn't be transparent on the G and the O because it's the same. Mm -hmm. So it shouldn't change during the crossfade. But also, the intersection of the A and the O and the T and the D should be, they shouldn't be see through. Oh, because it's like they're both at 50%. And you want, you basically, you're not saying that should be 50% translucent. They should take up 50% of the visual. I have no idea what you're on about, uh, mate. Look, never mind. it's wrong, and we're going to we'll, fix, we'll, we'll fix it. We're going to fix it. You can just split the word in half. <laughs> Do you know what? I posted this online, and that's what someone did. And I was like, it's still wrong, because the intersection on the A and the O is wrong, and the, the T and the D is wrong. <laughs> and I'm look, the reason it's not working is because mm -hmm. of how layering works on yeah. the web and everything else, like Photoshop and all that. So it uses the same basic rule. Whereas if they, here's a, a square with opacity 0.5. Mm -hmm. And what that does is that's going to block out 50% of the background. Mm -hmm. And when you do this, you put another one on top, that's going to block out 50% of the background. Which we block out 50%, we end up with 75%? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. If, if you half something, half something again, you end up with a quarter remaining. Yeah. And so yeah, in this case, the equivalent is opacity 7, uh, 0.75, which is correct for layering. Yes. But it is not correct for a crossfade. Which is what you're trying to achieve. Which is what we're trying to achieve. So I thought I'd have a look into how this works mathematically. Um, because you know, this is something that's happening with thousands and thousands of pixels at mm -hmm. once. Um, but it's actually quite a lengthy process to figure out how to put one pixel on top of another pixel and figure out yeah, what like they Yeah, I, I actually have no idea how intuitively how to fix that. Because if you always just talk about like how much to let through of the background, the second they both let anything through, the background will come through. And you they they don't can want never that. add up to no background is coming through. So here's how normal layering works. So what we're going to do is take a red 50% opacity pixel, and we're going to put it on top of a blue 50% opacity mm -hmm. pixel. The first thing we do is multiply the colors by their alpha. Often called pre-multiplied, isn't it? Pre-multiplied alpha. 
uh, which is the kind of default language for like some in, like, web in GL. computer graphics and stuff, I think. But we don't. It's not something we encounter elsewhere on the web often. Like when yeah. we're doing colors in CSS, they're not pre-multiplied. 2D canvas is not pre-multiplied. Uh, WebGL can be either. And I think it is. I only know it as a necessity for compositing when you want to have you have multiple layers and you want to merge into one image. If you don't do this, then layers with transparency can get weird fringes. Yes, and that's exactly why we're going to uh, you know multiply them here because we're going yeah. to be doing some compositing. I get. I guess it is compositing. Yeah. It is. Ex so the operation we're about to do is called source over. Uh, which is one of the compositing <laughs> methods. The the Duffner Alberts. The Duffner Alberts. <laughs> compositing. <Hilbert. laughs> Porter Duff. Porter Duff. Thank, thank you. For the people who define this sort of stuff. <laughs> so we've got our two multiplied uh, pixels, uh, source and a destination. And this is the bit which is key for the source over uh, operation. What they do is it, you take the pre multiplied destination and multiply every channel, so the red, green, blue, and alpha, by one minus the alpha of the source. Oh, I'll... And this reduces the impact of the, the destination. <laughs> the final destination? The final <laughs> destination. And then they're just added together. So we're now we're taking that transformation, and we're adding all of the channels of that to the channels of the, of the source. Also, it's two steps. The first step is literally just like adjusting by one minus the alpha of the source. And then, as a separate step, you add them together. It's okay, okay. Yes. Um, and then you know, we're going to unmultiply. Unmultiply. <laughs> yeah. You mean like division? Division. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't, yeah, I mean, that would be the right term for it. <laughs> Let's go with unmultiply, um, where we are going to like, you know, take all of the channels and we're going to divide them by the alpha to get the, the kind of value that we are more familiar with. And that's the result. So we can see here that we've got the 0.75 alpha. Which mm -hmm. is wrong for a crossfade. We would want yeah. it to be one, but the colors are also not what we would expect for a crossfade, because we've ended up with like one third red and two thirds blue. Yes, if you would want to be slap bang in the middle purple, right? Exactly. You would want fifty percent, fifty percent in a crossfade halfway through a crossfade. Yeah. So it's it's kind of wrong, not just on the alpha, but also on on the color as well. And things kind of went so. Why wrong. did you show me all this? If this is wrong. Well, I'm showing you why it's wrong. Like oh. this is, but but this is correct for layering, right? Because okay. you know, yes. we, were, we were doing that reduction on the destination, which is the thing in the background, mm -hmm. uh, but not on the source. Which the result of that visually is that the order matters. Yeah. So something is on top of the other thing, right? Right. So the only difference between these two is that uh, on the left hand side the blue is on top, on the right hand side the red is on top. You might think intuitively that 50% alpha order wouldn't matter, but exactly for the reason, like you're going from the background forwards, I guess, how much is let through from what is behind you, the order does matter. Yes, exactly. Um, which is correct for layering, it's just not correct for crossfading, because in a crossfade, the order doesn't matter at all. Like, no. it, it's, it doesn't matter, because it is just like a, a linear interpolation of you know, one pixel to another pixel. Mm -hmm. So there is a solution in CSS for this. <laughs> dash webkit dash crossfade. Yes. Uh, it's defined in CSS as crossfade, but the only browsers that implement it are Chrome and the uh, the Chromium browsers and the WebKit browsers. It's It, it was implemented many years ago, um, back when we used to use uh, these prefix things. And there mm. isn't a prefix, uh, an unprefixed version yet. Firefox doesn't support it either. But this lets you provide two images mm -hmm. and then a percentage. A fixed percentage? Like you, can you animate? The percentage? You can. And this, this will animate, uh, it, yeah, because it's got a transition on background ah. image. Uh, and then you hover it, and it will be fading from one this to the other. This feels like this would repaint, even though there's probably a way to do it without repaints. But that uh, we are ahead of. Yes. It's, I don't think it's an optimized implementation in, in terms of that. Um, but it works, right? So I, it's not a full solution, because you have to do it with images. You can't do it with just DOM elements. Yeah. Um, but it'll do this. And that's where you see that's a proper crossfade, because the O, uh, the G and the O at the start, even though the, you know, it is crossfading them, because yeah. those pixels are the same between the images, there's no visual difference. Um, and also, if we go to 50% of the transition, you can now see the bits where the O and the A intersect, and the T and the D intersect. You've got a solid color. OK. So what's the math behind this, then? It's a different compositing method that is also in the Schubert Cumberdale <laughs> <laughs> book of, of uh, compositing methods. It's called lighter. So the one we saw before, the one that you know is a layered one, doesn't work with crossfade, source over. 
This one is lighter. That's that's what we're actually doing in the implementation for crossfade. The spec doesn't say you have to use lighter for this. Um, it, the spec talks about a linear transition of, of colors. Okay. Um, oh, there's that also makes sense to talk about as like your tr linear transition from the first pixel value to the second pixel value. It doesn't. It doesn't. Actually, I can't quite remember what the the spec words it like, but. If you if you just define it as a linear transition of colors, you run into the problem of if you go from um, zero opacity black to 100% um, opacity white, you'll get the gray in the middle because your red, green, and blue are interpolating from right. zero to two five five. Also true. Yeah. Um, but that is not true in pre-multiplied colors because there's no you never have a case where you have a you know an alpha of zero. Okay, okay, okay. And anything else? Yeah, to go it, from blue zero percent opacity, like the pre-multiplication will effectively turn it black, even yes. though that's actually blue. Yeah, exactly. I can, okay, I can see the problem. So that's one of the reasons why like, we would use pre-multiplied colors for this, right? You yeah. Know, um, yeah, and that's what what lighter does. So lighter is very similar to the previous operation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we start off with our colors, we multiply the the alpha, um, and then we just go and add them together. It doesn't have that transform step. Where we reduce oh. the destination, and so that's where then the opacity also adds back to to one. Yes. So if, if if our opacities add to one, we will have that they always when they overlap, they will have no op full opacity, no translucency. Yeah, it's, it's the, I've, I'm struggling with the words as well, but it's it's like yeah, one one alpha. It's one uh, opacity of 100 percent. Yes. In CSS terms, I, you know, we we would multiply. It doesn't actually matter for this one because we're at one at one anyway. But it, that might not be the case. True. If the image has its own opacity. Uh, in it, and I, I guess with the images we saw before, like the anti-aliasing on the letters mean there will be pixels, which are that's true actually, yeah, which are semi-transparent, and uh, yeah, that's it. Um, that's the solution we're looking for. So, for shared element transitions, which is a, a feature where we we want to bring uh, page transitions to the web, mm. we want proper crossfades. Right, Cr there's Naturally. they're going to happen all over the place, and there might be a you know opacity in in some of the elements. So we want to bring this to the web. Um, the truth is, it actually already is there in some places. Um, this is 2D Canvas. Yeah, uh, you have actually all the compositing operations as keywords there. You can do these shenanigans. So this this would be doing a, a crossfade mix of two images in Canvas. The you know the magic bit there being uh, the global composite operation, uh, setting that to lighter. Yeah. That's, that's already there. Um, so yeah, we just I, we want to bring this to CSS so you can do it with any two DOM elements. Um, you, you don't have to do that hacky crossfade that doesn't quite work. And this seems like the right place for it because this is a, a bit of CSS where you apply a compositing operation yeah. to an element. So why not just lighter instead of multiply? Yeah, we already have mixed blend mode. Yes, so mixed blend it, mode is it, already it's a, just feature. a keyword that's missing. Well, I guess the underlying implementation. Well, part of the question is, is and one of the things because we, we are proposing this to the CSS working group and saying, like, you know, can we have this for crossfading reasons, yeah. but also for other things? The spec does define blending and compositing differently. In the global compositing operation thing in Canvas, they're all just thrown into one bucket. Yeah. So we're kind of like, is there a reason we, is there a reason that compositing and blending was kept separate? In CSS, we don't know the answer yet. They're so maybe you would end compositing up, mode on there. Maybe, <laughs> and, and you know, are there cases where you would do both? You would blend in one way and composite in another way. Is that the because blending doesn't change the alpha channel? Yeah, is, is one of is kind of the, the key difference between blending and compositing. I, I guess. to ask because I was like, I'm now not so sure anymore. I, I know the difference. No, I'm not sure I know the difference. But I think it's something to do with what happens with the alpha channel, but it might not matter. Um, and we can just do do this, uh, and then you'll get proper crossfading. And here's how here's how you do it. All right, got a couple of elements. Mm -hmm. The from and the to. I mean, this is basically how you would do it today if you were doing it the hacky way that doesn't quite work. Yeah. It's the same. Um, layer the two on top of each other. That's you, your favorite trick, isn't it? I I had to put this in the slides. This is you know you don't have to do it this way, but I love this trick of using grid to put two uh, elements on top of each other. I use this now most of the time instead of uh, absolute positioning. Yeah. Because the benefit is. You use grid. You use grid, and you look <laughs> cool in front of your friends. No, the container uh, has layout. The container will take up the space of both elements combined. True, because with absolute positioning, you don't have an intrinsic size. You don't have a size mm. on the a layout size. That, the is, actually, that is actually a benefit. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So I, I really like this. Anyway, back to the story. Um, 
the two element opacity zero. Mm -hmm. uh, again, nothing's unusual here. This is how you would do it, even if you were doing it the slightly Still waiting wrong way. for the mind blowing. Well, mind blown right there. There you Boom. go. This is the, the way it gets different. You apply this lighter mode. You only have to do it to the two element. Doesn't matter if you do it to both. But important thing you would need to do is isolate the container. And this is an existing property. This is not something new we're proposing. This is something that's there I've already. I've never seen this in my life. So what it means is that for the compositing operation, stop at this element. So um, if you're using lighter, in the same way that if you use mix blend mode multiply, it's not only going to do that compositing with the thing that is underneath it, it's going to be all the things that are underneath it. Also, and it's basically going to flatten the entire subtree first and then? In terms of pixels, not in terms yeah. of subtrees in a DOM tree. It's whatever pixels are behind yeah. it, it's going to blend with those. Oh. And with a crossfade, uh, with this lighter mode, you only want it to be doing that operation with the the other thing that you're fading. I've never between. seen it. It really only becomes relevant with mixed blend mode stuff, right? Or is there ever a use case for isolation outside of? No, it's just for mixed blend mode, I believe. OK. Um, so that means that, yeah, the, the crossfade container will you know, that, that will sort of be done in isolation, yeah. uh, I guess. A. Uh, and then the result will be um, composite. source over composited yeah. with, with everything else, which oh, gives you the, the result you're looking for. Yes, OK. Um, and, that's, and that's it so for the rest. Just the usual stuff, like sort of on hover, but you can do, you can do it with whatever. I'm saying, yeah, so the, the, the from will fade to 0, the 2 will fade to, uh, to 1. And uh, you'll get a proper crossfade uh, that looks like that, where just the pixels that need changing will change. And that's it. We're going to propose that to CSS Working Group. Hopefully, they say yes. And hopefully, we get this in browser yeah. soon. Because the implementations are already there. It's just exposing I'm, it via the keyboard. In, if you think about it, I'm kind of stunned that this actually isn't possible in CSS right now. So same. Like it, It's because you know if it's an image gallery or something, like crossfading items is something we actually do a lot. And we either rely on, yes, that want them being opaque items, or um, we do it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so let's start doing it right. That's all right. Right, I'm out. Where are you off? I'm leaving Google. You what? What am I going to do now? Action. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So, 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 so. Oh, I know we had a couple, <laughs> a couple of. No, I, I like to to mute myself before I go <laughs> to the urinal. Uh, of course, of course, yeah. We are on two or three. There will be urinal stories. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's oh. like you know, you know, I wouldn't blame Lucas for falling asleep having to listen to us babble on about tech that he doesn't get shit about. Uh, absolutely, absolutely.